I assume I need no introduction. Hello and welcome to Diamonds of Craft where I make things. My name is Sarah and welcome back to another video. I took part in a big collab for Halloween. I know I'm a bit late, but we had some technical issues. Don't worry about it. This collab was hosted by Splendid Miscellany on Instagram. I really hope that's how you say that. I'm sorry if it's not. We have a lot of talented artists that took part in this collab and I was really excited to get it started because I can make a vampire. I am making Lestat from Interview with a Vampire. Now, if you know Interview with the Vampire, the film, um, Lestat is played by Tom Cruise. My aim was not to make this doll look like Tom Cruise. It was just to make uh, my version of Lestat. My artistic license is showing right through here. And I do have to apologize to all the J-Hope stands out there for what I'm about to do to his doll. Forgive me. It's all in the name of art. I hope you do forgive me by the end of this video. Trust the process. <laughs> but he was my base, he was the best base for it, and yeah. Let's get right into the video. Like I said, I chose J-Hope as my base because I like his smile. He is the only BTS doll to have a smile that I thought would match Lestat. In the book, he's described to have a large mouth, which I feel this J-Hope mold does have. So as usual, his hair and face must come off. I have repainted these BTS dolls before, and I tell you, getting the factory paint off is an absolute ordeal. But it's okay, it comes off with a little bit of effort and a little bit of elbow grease. His hair isn't glued, but I did smack the heck out of him to remove the little bits of hair once they'd been pulled out of the tracks. Sorry, J-Hope. I didn't want this doll to still look like J-Hope when I was finished, and I know his fans will always know, but to try and avoid it, I had to resort to extreme measures. And those extreme measures were removing those molded on eyelids. Again, sorry J-Hope. I tried to just sand them off at first with a heavy grit sandpaper. The plan was to move to finer grits as I went, but it wasn't a great plan. So I had to speed the process along by shaving them with my scalpel and sanding them after. For his hair, I am using this pale beige yarn. Lestat is blonde and this isn't golden like in the film, but pale blonde is fine with me. I just unravel the fibers so that they are easier to brush out and I keep going until I get a pile of noodles. I am rerouting the hairline and part mainly because his hair is in a little ponytail and I feel like making a wig just won't sit right. And I do apologize for all of that being out of frame. I brush the fibers out with a pet brush and slowly straighten them so that they're all smooth. Then once the hairline and part are all done, I am gluing the fiber directly onto his head. The reason I am doing this is to reduce the bulk of hair for when I do tie it back and it covers the scalp to give the illusion of more hair. I also know what an absolute ordeal it is to put these heads back onto the bodies. So I am reattaching him before I do the face because I do not want to crack that hard work later. He is not as poseable as I would like. The arms and hands only go so far and it really limits the movement. You can see the difference here. So 
So what I did was I cut into the plastic by the joints to allow a bigger range of motion. I say bigger, um, like it's revolutionary. Uh, in reality, he can hold his arms just a little closer to his body, but that's huge for me. I'm fine with it. I also took chunks out of myself whilst doing this, so if you plan on doing this, be very careful and cut slowly. Just look at that, slightly closer to his body, fantastic. I hate that the hands on these dolls have mesh together fingers too, so I opened up the index and little fingers from the hand. Now for clothes. I unpicked the jacket and trousers that came with the doll to make sure that I had a pattern that would definitely fit. His iconic poofy sleeves needed to be made in all their glory. I don't plan on having this shirt beneath the jacket I'm going to make because it would be far too bulky, but I hope to take some pictures of him without his jacket and I really wanted to make the sleeves. <laughs> they are fabulous. I cut a big piece of lace down the middle for the ruffles on the cuff and I gathered that on the bottom and hand sewed everything together as usual. So his jacket is made from the same pieces as the original jacket is made from except when I cut them all out I realised I needed it to be longer in the front and the back so I did it again, and I added a couple of centimetres to the end. I stitched these together first and pressed them with my tiny iron to lie them flat. Though the taffeta material would just not lay flat, and I didn't want to melt it by amping up the heat, so I did end up stitching all around the outside of it. I then painted the embroidery onto the pieces, I was not about to learn how to embroider in less than a day and make it look good, so I did paint it on with this puffy fabric paint. It did not like being painted on with a brush, but every time I attempted a thin line with the nozzle it came out with like too much paint, so this was the next best solution. I painted the pattern to the best of my ability with the limited reference I could see online. And I did the same for the sleeves. I added the ruffles of his shirt to the ends of the sleeves to give the illusion he's actually wearing a shirt beneath it. Then his waistcoat got much the same treatment off camera unfortunately because I was having a moment. <laughs> And I realise I don't actually show the finished garments on camera after I make them, so I am going to show what I have here. I made some pants, some socks, the shirt, a waistcoat, and his jacket. Now I needed to do something about his teeth. I didn't want to just paint them on, I wanted them to be a little bit more 3D, so I made cuts into the lips. And the plan was to sculpt the teeth out of polymer clay, fit them into the ridges and bake them. But that was a stupid idea because it took me forever, so I just made them out of epoxy clay. The same with his little thimble thing. It's not a thimble, but like a device that he uses to cut open skin. His face gave me some trouble and by some trouble I mean I did it like five times I don't usually struggle with the faces but this really had me annoyed sometimes my hands don't cooperate with my brain that well and I guess when I did this face it was just one of those days 
I even took his face off and opted to paint the teeth and lips first. And then, because I was annoyed that I didn't get his eyes right, I actually drew Tom Cruise's eye for reference and to prove to myself that I could actually do it. It just was not translating onto the doll well at all. I think it's because Tom Cruise has a very strong brow bone and his eyes are set deeply into his face and, well, J-Hope's mold is not like that at all. <laughs> So I decided to start the next round of eyes with the dark pastels, setting his eyes further back. I painted the whites on so it would be bright when I did get round to the eyes. I even filled in the shadows on his chest to give myself a break. <laughs> and it worked this time, at least for now. I added the blue veins that all of the vampires in this film have. I really enjoyed this part because it was just squiggly lines that I couldn't get wrong. And I took the eye off that I hated and finished the other one off camera after having another moment. I was very happy with that left eye though, so I'm just recreating it on the right here. It was difficult for sure, and I think I'd have driven myself crazy if I'd have actually tried to make this doll look like Tom Cruise. So I'm glad I gave myself artistic license here. Also, having days like this is just part and parcel of being an artist, or even being human, to be honest. I never like showing my failures to people, I've always been that person who would rather hide that. Which isn't bad, but I mean, we all make mistakes and honestly, who cares? <laughs> so his face wasn't great the first time, but I did end up with the result that I liked and that's really all that matters. I just had to re-add the veins that I took off on the other side and give his face a little bit more of a gaunt look. And now finally I can move on to his hair. I braided it in all small sections so it would create a nice wave after heating it with a hairdryer and unraveling it so that it sets in place nicely. It turned out really nice um, and now he has better hair than me so that's fine. And to match his eyebrows because they are way too dark and I wasn't about to remove the face again to correct them, I am giving him a root so his hair looks more natural. All that's left are his shoes and I went in on this all guns blazing having no idea what to do but you know we jump in at the deep end in this house. I cut out four soles in warbler and taped one to his foot so that I could use the silk clay to mould the toe of the shoe to his foot. Then I cut four small half circles out of the mounting board and glued them together so it could make the heel of the shoe. I 
I then glued those to the other soles that I'd cut out and that is going to act as the base. I cut the rest of the shoe out of a thin card so it was sturdy enough to stand by itself and glued faux leather to the outside. Then over the top of the toe of the shoe, so it looks like it's all made of leather. I glue the other base to the bottom and tried it on the doll's foot. The first one looks a bit clumsy, but it'll do. I then glued these silver nail art ovals on to make them look like little buckles. And that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making him as usual. I hope the J-Hope fans out there do actually forgive me for this. Once again I want to shout out to Will who took all of these amazing pictures of Lestat. Um, thank you. Thank you and Steph for letting me use your kitchen to <laughs> take pictures in. The links to Splendid Miscellany and Will's photography page are going to be down below. We do have a hashtag if you want to check out all of the amazing artwork from everyone who took part in this collab. Honestly, it's incredible. The, the amount of work that has gone into it is, is just awesome. So definitely check it out. And if you want to see more pictures of him, I will post more on Instagram as usual. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider a subscribe, possibly comment, but don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Ring my bell as usual, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Have you heard enough? But it was I've had to listen to that for centuries.